This video is sponsored by Wanderlust. The question I get asked all the time is, Tyler, what lights should I buy to start filming videos? And while I can give you light recommendations, just buying a specific light isn't going to give you nice, flattering light. You have to understand the principles of how lighting works. So in today's video, I'm gonna share with you the principles you need to understand in order to make sure that whatever light it is that you own will look as soft as possible, and that way you can set up a really great lighting setup for your Zoom calls or YouTube videos at home. Hey there, my name is Tyler Harrington and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this channel, we talk about technology and content creation and today's video fits perfectly into both of those camps. So let's start super simple. The most important thing you need to know in terms of lighting, soft lighting for this video is this principle. The larger the light source is relative to your subject, the softer the light will be. So basically what this means is that a large light source is gonna give you soft light. Now we can increase the relative size of our light source in two ways. One is increasing the physical size of the light, how big the light actually is. And the second is gonna be how close that light is to your subject. Before we go any further, we need to define really quickly what we're talking about when we say soft light or harsh light, because I feel like we're kind of just throwing that term around. It would be helpful, I think, if we just define it. So when we're describing hard light or soft light, what we're really describing is the quality of the shadows produced by that light. Now, harsh light is generally gonna create hard shadows where they have a very hard edge, uh, whereas soft light is gonna have soft shadows where there is no hard edge and it's much more of a gradual fall off. A common misconception is that the harshness of the light is due directly to the intensity of the light. So I think that people think that if you make the light brighter, it's automatically going to have harsher shadows, or if you make the light more dim, it's gonna have softer shadows, and that just really is not the case. We're not gonna really cover light intensity in this specific video. There's a lot that goes into lighting. Today we're really just talking about the relative softness of light, so we're not gonna get into every lighting principle. Just know that like intensity and direction and all these other principles of light are really important and I'll make another video covering all those other things as well. Um, but for today, we're really just gonna be talking about the size of our light source. A softbox is a great tool for creating soft light because what it is doing, it is taking a very small light source, which is only you know an inch or two big, it's very small, and it's spreading that light out across this entire light dome, therefore making it relatively much larger and much softer. All right, so now we're gonna demonstrate the physical size of the light and how the, the impact that that has on the harshness. So over here, we have um, the 300D with nothing on it. It's just the bare chip shining down on me. And as you can see, there are some pretty gross, <laughs> ugly shadows. It doesn't look very good and it is not, not very flattering. Um, now we're gonna put the, the lantern onto it, which is gonna make it bigger and it's gonna make it much softer. So let's put that on. All right, so now we have the lantern turned on. As you can see, we lost some brightness. So whoop. so we're gonna turn our brightness back up to compensate. Oh, it's a little too much. Whoop. There, that's much better. Okay, so now this is with the light, the aperture lantern, which honestly isn't even that big of a softbox. I chose this one instead of my normal uh, light dome because the light dome is huge and it's kind of unfair. But this is a, it's, it's big, but it's not massive. But you can see that it makes a massive difference on how it looks on my skin. The shadows that we had before on my shoulder and across my face and everywhere else are almost non-existent. There's some shadows, if I put my hand up here, you can kind of see a little bit of a shadow, but it's much more subtle, it's much more flattering. And again, the light has not physically changed positions at all. It is just a significantly larger light source now, which means it's gonna be a softer light. Now, a soft box or a diffusion or something like this is not the only way to make our light source larger. Another really great way to make our light larger is by bouncing our light off of something else. So essentially by bouncing our light off of a wall or a ceiling or some sort of a reflector or a piece of cardboard, anything like that, we're essentially taking the whatever that object is that we're bouncing the light off of and that is becoming our new light source. Once we bounce it off the wall, now that entire wall, or at least the section that's being hit by the light, is our new light source, and that's much larger 
than the actual light itself. Okay, so here I'm gonna demonstrate this bounce technique and how this can look really good in starting with a not so great look. Okay, so here we are, we've got the light pointed directly at me. And as you can see, we have lots of ugly shadows and it's just not a very appealing look. It doesn't, doesn't look very good at all, but we can fix this pretty easily. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take this light here and we'll do this in real time on that camera over there. We're gonna point it right here, just bounce it off the wall and I'm gonna increase the brightness. Okay. Okay, so now it's bouncing off of the wall right here. And now, as you can see, the light on my face right here looks much, much softer. It's much more flattering. It's much more directional. And I could even be more strategic potentially with the way that I position myself in relation to the light. Right now, it's kind of coming at a, you know, at a pretty harsh angle this, this way, but just that little technique of bouncing it, I'm bouncing it off of this door right here. You can see that this looks much, much more flattering, much more appealing, much better. Now, you don't have a ton of control doing it this way, but in terms of just increasing the size of the light source, which now this entire door is my light source, this is a much larger light source than before and is much, much more flattering. Now when we do this bouncing technique, it's really important that whatever you're gonna bounce the light off of is a neutral color, because whatever color that it is, the light is going to take on the properties of that. So if you're bouncing off of a green wall or a red wall or something like that, the light on your subject is going to have a green or red cast. So it's really important that you choose something that's either going to be uh, maybe like a beige or white ideally, um, so that you're not getting any sort of color discoloration to your light. All right, so let's pause really quickly to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Wanderlust. We've been outsourcing our wedding editing to Wanderlust for years, and it has by far been the best business decision we've ever made. For years, I fought the idea of outsourcing because every company I had found up until that point had either been too expensive to be realistic, or they just didn't meet the quality expectations that I had for my films until we found Wanderlust. Wanderlust was able to edit all of our wedding films at a price that made sense for our price point and at a quality that I was super, super happy with. But Wanderlust doesn't just edit wedding films. Wanderlust offers editing services for weddings, corporate films, animated video, and logo animation. And the process is super simple. You just choose the type of film you need edited, answer some specific questions about your project, and send over the footage. Everything is managed from a streamlined portal where you can chat with the Wanderlust team with any specific questions you might have, manage your revisions, and so on. Their turnaround times are quick and they have never missed a deadline. If you feel like your editing backlog is holding you back, from living your life or growing your business, you need to give Wanderlust a try. Thank you again to Wanderlust for sponsoring today's video. If you wanna save $50 on your first edit with Wanderlust, simply click on the link in the description below and you can try them out to see what it's all about. And the second principle we talked about is the how close the light is to your subject. This one's a little bit more self-explanatory, but when I film my YouTube videos, like right now, the light is just barely out of frame. Like I can touch the light right here. It is as close to me almost as physically possible without actually being in the shot. Now, the further back the light gets, the more harsh and the less soft it's going to be. All right, so now we're gonna demonstrate the distance of the light and how that impacts the softness. So right now we are using the Aperture Lantern and it is six feet or so away from me. Um, you know, I cannot reach it. It's decently far across the room. Um, and this is what it looks like right here um, in terms of like shadows on my arms and shadows across my face. This is what we're getting with the light all over there. Now we're gonna bring it just outside of frame so we can kind of see and compare and contrast the difference. Okay, so now the light is literally right here. I am touching it. So it's, you know, two or three times closer than it was before. I did turn the intensity down just a smidge to get in more even exposure. Um, but you can see that this is a very different looking feel. When I raise my arms up, you can see that the shadows are much softer, almost non-existent. The light across my face is much softer and the fall off is much less. It's wrapping around my face more and it's just a overall softer look. Now, again, this is due to the fact that this is now, even though the, it's the exact same light, the exact same light and pretty much the exact same angle, um, the difference is now it is physically closer 
and the light is able to wrap around my face more before falling off. It's just physically bigger in relation to me, therefore it is softer. Now, if you are working in a really tight space, you don't have a lot of room, an LED panel is probably gonna be your best bet. I suggest getting one that's at least 12 inches wide. They usually come in rectangles. I get one that's at least 12 inches um, because again, it's gonna give you a larger just light source in general right off the bat. So once you have your LED panel, the next thing you're gonna to do to get the soft light, like as we've been discussing all video, is to get it as close to you as physically possible. I'm linking down below a couple really great options for desktop light stands. One of them just sits on your desk and one of them actually attaches to the side of your desk. So depending on what your configuration, your setup looks like, you can still get the light on your desk and as close to you as possible, which will give you the best chance of having that really soft light. But by combining these two things, a relatively large light panel and getting it really, really close to you, you can achieve much softer light than if you had it mounted somewhere really far away. Now, if you have a little bit more room to work with, maybe a little bit larger space, some room around your desk, kind of like I do, then you wanna look into getting some sort of a soft box that will help to make the light even that much bigger. Now, my all time favorite light is the one that I'm using right now. It's the Aperture Light Dome. And I think that paired with an Aperture 120D is kind of like the perfect YouTube light setup. But maybe you're on a budget and you can't afford that much or you don't want to invest that much into a light. Um, I'm going to link some other softbox options down below. Now, again, whatever you do, you want to try and get just the biggest softbox that you possibly can. If you do decide to go with some of these cheaper Amazon softboxes, none of them are usually really, really big. Big. They're not going to be as big as my light dome here, but a lot of them come in pairs of two. So what you can actually do is if you put them side by side or next to each other, they essentially create one really big light and that will make your light even that much softer coming from the one direction. Now, the last thing you need to consider in terms of a Zoom meeting setup is gonna be your ease of use. While yes, using this Aperture you know, Light Dome would be really great to have for my Zoom meetings and it looks really, really nice. Um, it's kind of a hassle, it's in the way, it's not super convenient to have set up in my office at all times, and it's just not very practical for something that I'm gonna leave as a permanent setup. So you kind of need to weigh the factors between like, perfect overall softness, like this huge massive light and your ease of use. So that's why I think getting something like an LED panel or something like that, that you can kind of just leave on your desk up at all times. It's super easy to just flick on whenever you you know sit down for a meeting, especially if you do meetings a lot. You wanna make sure that you're kind of balancing this you know softness quality versus the ease of use and you know quickness to set up. All right, there you guys have it. I hope you found this helpful. And just one thing I wanna leave you with is that these principles about lighting, they apply to any scenario. It doesn't have to be for video. It doesn't have to be with, you know, video lights. This applies to just any type of light in general. So if you shoot with windows, maybe you don't have any lights and windows is all you have. The larger the window, the softer it's going to be. Or if you can get really close to the window, the softer it's going to be. If you found this video helpful and you really loved it, go ahead and leave this video a like. And if you want to see more videos just like it in the future, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss another video. Thank you all so much for watching. My name is Tyler Harrington, and I'll see you next time.